today we're focused on sharing with you practices, tools, and resources that we ourselves have used over the past 12 months in our own walk of faith, and as we've tried to share our faith and make disciples with others. Welcome into the Harvest Friends. I'm Abigail and I'm joined today by Andrew. Um, sadly, Lakeith is at his day job today. Can you believe it? Um, so he's not able to be with us. So if you're new here, our goal with this space is to give you clarity and confidence that you need to be effective and living and sharing your faith in the everyday places of life. So today we're going to be sharing the top practices and tools and resources that Andrew and I have used in 2019 for discipleship. So we're going to get into that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about this one because I love to give recommendations. Um, <laughs> but before we get started, we have a couple of announcements. Um, since the last time we recorded, we got into full gear with our end of the year finish strong fundraising. So Andrew, give us an update on how that's going. Yeah, we're doing a year end fundraiser here for Into the Harvest. And it's it's gone well. We're off to a good start, but with just a few weeks left, we do still need um, your help. So if this uh, ministry has been an encouragement to you over the past year, then we would love for you guys to help us keep it going and grow it. Into the Harvest is a nonprofit ministry, so we rely on donations to do the work that we're doing right now. And uh, the end of the year is always an important time. So if you want to be a part of that fundraiser that's going on over the next two weeks, then there's lots of ways you can you can find the link for that. If you're listening to the podcast, we've got a link in the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the video description. Or if you're not sure, you can just go to our website, intotheharvest.org, and there's a little button at the very top of the page. So we really appreciate everybody who has already contributed to help us uh, finish strong in 2019. And if you haven't had a chance to, then we'd love to see you guys help us out and get us launched in 2020 on, on really solid footing. So thanks. Yeah, absolutely. We really appreciate your support. And speaking of finishing strong, this is our very <laughs> last episode of 2019. I can't believe it's finally here. Um, I know. So, it is yeah, pretty so amazing. It kind of is. I, I don't know if those listening feel the same level. <laughs> We do, but we're really shocked we're here. Um, so after this episode, we're going to kind of be heading into a little bit of a holiday season, but don't worry, we will still have episodes for you. We're going to be do doing some bonus audio and little fun things for you to finish off the year strong. And we will be back um, January 2nd for the beginning of 2020. I cannot even believe that that's a thing, <laughs> but it is. And we will be there with you to um, ring in the new year and get this party started for Into the Harvest 2020. So that's all the news I've got for you. Let's get started on today's topics. Um, Andrew, do you want to get us started? I really don't care. I've got so many things sitting in front of me that I want to share. <laughs> so just you should probably go first so that you get some time to talk to. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would love to uh, start us off. Well, like Abigail said earlier, today we're focused on sharing with you practices, tools, and resources that we ourselves have used over the past 12 months in our own walk of faith. And as we've tried to share our faith and make disciples with others, um, also, like she mentioned at the very top of the show, the whole point of this ministry is to give you clarity and confidence so that you can live as a disciple and make disciples in the everyday places of life, in your home setting, with your immediate family, with your extended family, in your neighborhood, your workplace. Um, it's, I think, the most exciting thing about being a follower of Jesus is living this adventure of faith in the everyday of life. It's not just showing up once a week at a, a service, although it's great to gather with our fellow believers. Uh, that's a huge part of our faith. But then going out into the harvest and living it out is, is really our passion. It's in our name. And so today we really wanted to share with you very practical 
tools, resources, or just practices that uh, have helped us over the past 12, month li- uh, 12 months live that out. So I'll start us off, Abigail. Um, for me, over the past 12 months, one of the, uh, the top practices that has really helped me in my faith is a focused prayer life or choosing to take the time to focus my prayer life. And there's a few ways that, um, that I've done that. So the first is to identify what I would call the big rocks of, of my faith. So what is it that I know I'm wanting to ask God to accomplish in my life and in the lives of those around me? And as I, as I sat back and took some time to identify what are some of those overarching long-term goals or prayer, requ- prayer requests that I have, um, it was very clear that that some of those um, are things that I need to be praying for in an ongoing way. That, that they're things that God's going to answer over time, and so um, I took the time to identify what those were, and then r- write them down, record them in writing. And then the uh, the second thing that I did to focus my prayer life that has helped me is I organized my my prayer times and. The way that looked is in part writing out those those big rock requests, um, and also it was actually laying out, I guess, mapping out my week, uh, Monday through Friday in particular, of things that I was going to pray for every day, and and then I broke up the people that I want to be praying for um, into five different sections, and then I, I've been praying for those Monday, Tuesday through Friday. And so that's been a, uh, a huge benefit for me because prior to that, my prayer life, I'd, I'd say I would characterize it as being a little bit more uh, spontaneous, but really more haphazard uh, or chaotic. And spontaneous is great. The, the great thing about focusing your prayer life is that you can still pray spontaneously. So it's not like you can only pray in a focused way. But where it's helped me is it's, it's really helped me first... Um, identify what is it that I really want God to do. There's a verse in James where he says, you do not have because you do not ask. And that really challenged me that there are things that I know I want God to do. And I'm, I was just convicted that I'm not consistently praying and asking him to do those things. And then uh, secondly, it really helped me. It helped me be consistent. It gave me a, a plan and structure that has helped me be consistent over the past 12 months. So I use, um, I use notes through a program called Evernote. Some of our listeners might be familiar with that, but um, I really like that because I can easily edit and update my prayer lists and my prayer requests. So it's not just a static thing throughout the year. I'm updating it, um, but it also allows me to set notifications on my my phone. And so that's a great way to remind myself to be um, consistent in my prayer life. So that's a practice that I've done this year that I would encourage people to consider doing is focus your prayer life by identifying what are those big requests and also by coming up with a, a plan, a weekly plan for how you're going to be praying for those. So I don't know, Abigail, does that make sense? And uh, any anything yeah. that I can share to clarify it? No, that makes really great sense. And I will actually piggyback on it because I think Um, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways to make a prayer life work. And, uh, so I'll give you my thoughts too, because it was on my list as well. And, you know, you're listening, you can now pick and choose what you like. (laughs) Um, I, I really fully agree though, to be intentional about your prayer lists. I think that's such a great a recommendation and just advice to give Andrew. Um, I probably didn't start doing that until probably the last five years or so. And it really did change my whole prayer life. Um, and I've talked about this on our blog a few times and I will for sure, just everybody prepare yourself. I will be like trouting this again at the beginning of this next year because I do it every year. Um, I make a yearly index card. In fact, Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, they are all living back there in a little slot and they all have like, I like, you know, cute because I'm a girl. I like decorated the top of each one, like the year 
um, so I can see all the little years poking out. But I just do um, one index card, and I try to fit um, all of my big prayers, as I like to call them. You call them like rock prayers. They're the things that you know you're going to need to pray for probably all 365 days. And, um, or, you know, there's something that you've been praying for for years. Is it a person's salvation? Is it healing? You know, those things that you know, you know, you're really going to go hard at because you really want to see them fulfilled. Um, and so I do that every year. I really pray about what I want to focus on, um, for the year. And I divide it into three categories. So the first is, um, my own personal life, um, my relationship with Jesus, the things that I want to see change in my heart. Um, and then I've kind of added in my family into that as well, because my children are kind of like me. They're extensions of me at this point. <laughs> so, um, so they're in there as well. So I've got like the big, you know, school and friends and salvations for all of my children in that section and my relationship with my husband and the things I want to see happen in this coming year in our relationship as well. Hmm. And then I have... Um, my what I this is going to be divided into up in and out so that was my up like my personal relationship with Jesus and then my in is all of like fellow believers I pray for into the harvest during that time um, for all of my teammates here in San Antonio um, and then I have people who I'm praying for for specific things in that section and I'm not sure if our internet connection is working I can, can still hear, hear you. Yep. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay. And you're back. That's good. I think what um, happens is if, if one of us doesn't talk for a certain amount of time, I don't know oh. if it just goes into sleep mode. Oh, maybe. So okay. every now and then I'll just say, that's good. Or something yeah. like that. And that way... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Sister. Good one. But you anyway. were sharing your out. You, yeah. you shared the, the in, the... And then Wait, now my out the, oh. is, no, so that up was for me personally, my right. relationship with Jesus in is like the body of Christ. Um, so the people that are already in the kingdom um, is kind of where that is stems from. And so it's, you know, my friends who are, have been trying to have a baby for years and years, their name just keeps getting put back on the card or people that are very ill and having a really hard time or, you know, just different like things I know are going to take a long time. And I really want to focus on those prayers this year. And then out is just like my huge list of people that I want to see saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that usually gets added to, it gets the whole backside of the card because I'm usually adding names. Right. Um, <clears throat> but the cool thing about my card is that every single one of those cards back there, and even my card for this year has little dates out to the side. Yes. And I love that <laughs> because those dates, it's mean that those prayers were answered, and that is just the the best thing for my faith. Um, it's the best thing to just keep me praying, and it's just a great reminder. And uh, yeah, just having some form of documentation. Yeah. I just need one tiny card. I'm not great with like big lists. We used to have this huge whole um, uh, graph thing that uh, Brett made, and I think it really worked for him, but it just overwhelmed me. It was like way too much to handle. And I also tried the doing like different people for different days. And right. friends, I'm not going to lie, there would just be something about one day per week that I would just never get to prayer or something. And then those poor people never got prayed for. So I <laughs> really had to. So maybe if you're listening, and you're a devoted prayer warrior, then do Andrew's plan. And if you know you're like me and there are going to be days that maybe you don't get to do your intercessory prayer, then um, you can just have a, a big list like me and hope we'll do better next year. <laughs> well, I think the the commonality is is being thoughtful, putting time and thought into who are the people that, I, that we want to pray for and what are the things that we want to consistently pray for. There's a passage in Mark 10 where Jesus... Uh, asks a blind man, what do you want me to do for you? And we could really go in depth on that. But I just want to focus for, for this purpose. If Jesus were to ask you that question, do you have a ready answer? And that's part of what um, focusing your prayer life has done for me is it's helped me know well, this is what I want you to do for me, Jesus. And for the blind man, he had his answer available. And and he got the answer. Jesus healed him so that he could see. And I'm really glad you brought up the point about 
um, how it helps you track answers to prayer. I mean, it's been amazing to see as you take the time to identify and then consistently pray uh, for God to move, you begin to notice that He is moving. I suspect God is moving all the time. We just don't notice it because we're not purposefully engaging in prayer. And perhaps He's not moving as much as as He would if we were. So I think that's a good one, Abigail. Should we jump to uh, the next one? You want to share your number two, and then I'll go after you? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like there might be a little person in my room right now. I can share uh, yeah, if that justice. helps. <laughs> We've got a third member on the podcast oh, right now. That was uninvited <laughs> guest. <laughs> well, okay. let me share. What? Let me share. You go mine. ahead. Yeah. So uh, a second thing that has helped me is actually a tool, which is a simple diagram that uh, I call the three measures of devotion. And uh, it really focuses on three verses from Jesus, three teachings from Jesus. And these... Um, These teachings help us identify, first, what it means to be a disciple. So that's from John 13, 13. Uh, Secondly, how to truly love God. That's John 14, 21. And then finally, how to do something truly great with your life, which is Matthew 5, 19. And so the, the illustration is identifying three teachings of Jesus that help us, um, be part of the great commission follow the great, the great commandment, and do something great with your life or become great in the kingdom. And I like to, to use that because it will actually identify the three roles of a disciple, and also it gives, it gives us an impartial way to measure our devotion. So in Proverbs chapter 20, it says, uh, many people proclaim to be loyal, but who can find someone who is truly trustworthy? And and Jeremiah tells us that our hearts are more deceitful than all else and desperately sick. You can't trust even your own evaluation of your devotion. So my observation is that a lot of times I will I will think I'm doing better than I actually am in terms of being devoted to Jesus. And so this is a simple tool, a simple diagram that gives us three impartial measures of devotion. And I, I really like to use it because I think it it's a way that I can quickly help someone identify the three roles of a disciple. So a disciple is a learner, a follower, and a messenger. And that comes out of this particular tool. That's very helpful, i found for myself and also as I'm trying to help a young believer catch a vision for growth and what it means to be a disciple. It also gives a reality check. Most people, when they see this, they realize that, hey, I thought I was doing better than I am. And then finally, it provides a very clear areas for people to to focus on. So I know I just kind of blitzed through that tool, but we're going to try to keep uh, this this episode of the podcast uh, to 30 minutes. So I'll simply say, if that's something you're interested in, you can go to the website and you can download the Disciple Makers Leatherman, which is just a set of tools. And one of those tools is the three measures of devotion, and you can read about it more in detail. So that's that's a tool that I find myself using over and over, and it's yeah. definitely one that I've used this past year. Thank you so much for bringing that back up because you've brought it up before, and every time I'm like, oh, i got to go check that one out. That's <laughs> going to be really useful, and I didn't take notes. So I've forgotten, and now I'm going to remember again. So we're going to link that so that hopefully yes. people like yep. me will remember and be able to go <laughs> check that out, and a whole bunch of other really great illustrations. If you have not downloaded the Leatherman, you like totally need to do that immediately. So, um, yeah, speaking, that's a free. It's a free resource. Yeah, so it's free, friends. At this time of year, when everything costs money. <laughs> Almost all the things we're going to tell you are free. So, uh, in fact, this next one that I have for you is also free and kind of along the same lines. I did an article, um, I believe it was the end of last year. Uh, I did a whole series called The Harvest Diaries, where I kind of, it was my very personal journey um, in the harvest and kind of what that's looked like for Brett and I. Uh, If you haven't read that, you can go check out the whole series on our website. Um, But one of those was about accountability. And um, it's something that I think has really helped my discipleship 
and those that I'm discipling a whole lot is to have very focused times where we meet and ask each other really pointed questions. Um, as a female, you know, you can get together and then get off track like within two seconds of getting hmm. together because you get on one topic and it can end up being really great and you have just really nailed that one topic hard. But when you get home, you think, oh, we didn't talk about this and this and this. So these questions that we have and we've once again put it on an index card for you because apparently I have a thing about index cards. Yeah. <laughs> I really lo I love them. Um, so Tina Wood and I uh, went through, these questions were not ours originally, but we went through and tweaked them to maybe a more um, uh, pleasing and like less confrontational way of putting some of those questions. And uh, we've worked with them and she then made them really pretty if you're into that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And you can actually find that to download in that article and we'll link that too. So poor yeah. Zach is going to have a lot to do post-production. Sorry, Zach. Uh, so, <laughs> but I really, it has been so helpful for me to know that one, I'm not going to forget to ask whoever I'm discipling um, certain questions about their time with the Lord or how they're being um, outwardly focused or, you know, even how their how sin is affecting their life. And so it's helpful, especially if you, it's hard for you um, to get deep in hard stuff to have just a question in front of you. It's not personal. It's on the card. So you have to ask it <laughs> and it can really help get into some really great um, and important conversations that we as believers really need to have. So um, I think that accountability and having times where we meet and ask each other questions and answer those questions, honestly, is probably one of the best things for my um, discipleship of myself um, by others and then when I'm discipling others as well. So that's a big one for me. Yeah, I think right, that's Andrew. great. I think that's great, Abigail. One, one thing I'm constantly challenged by with Jesus is – He's a question asker. And here, obviously, the greatest teacher the world has ever seen. And we've got a lot of his his amazing teachings as well. But when it came to how he interacted with people, um, it was almost always something that flowed out of, of questions. So I, I love that idea of having a bit of a template. Many of us can, can benefit from having a little bit of um, guardrails, if you will, uh, when it comes to sitting down with those that we're trying to invest in and disciple. So that's a great tool, and it's definitely something that you guys will find in the uh, the show notes or in the uh, the video description here on YouTube. So the, um, the third resource that I want to share is the Master Plan of Evangelism. And many of our viewers or listeners will be familiar with that book, but it's a book by Robert Coleman, it's a classic. I think it was written back in the, the 60s. And you um, will know it when you read it because it's, it's like Yeah, it's a little bit dated. <laughs> a little bit dated with the, uh, the language there. But it really makes the case that Jesus didn't just give us the Great Commission that he wants us to be involved in, but he also gave us the blueprint for how we should go about engaging in that mission. And the blueprint was actually his life. And so if you study the Gospels with the eye of, of trying to discern, hey, Jesus didn't just give us a mission. He invited us to be part of his mission, the, the work that he came to earth to accomplish. And so he didn't just tell us to go make disciples of all nations. He himself made disciples. He made the first generation. And we can look at how he went about his earthly ministry. And the book does a great job, I think, of identifying eight principles that you see in the ministry of Jesus that you and I can actually put into practice in our own lives. And so I've used that over the years. I continue to use it. I haven't found a, a better resource personally to, to get at this idea of helping people get familiar with the blueprint of Jesus for disciple making. The things I like about it first is it's, it's very digestible. Like I said, it's, it's not, it's not uh, vague or abstract. There are eight principles that he identifies in the ministry of Jesus. Like yeah, it's not a it's not a thick book, so you can you can read it. Um, but it's also steeped in scripture. So he's done an intensive study of of the life and ministry of Jesus. And so as he goes through each chapter, um, identifying different aspects of Jesus's ministry, 
there are just literally hundreds, there may be thousands of references. So if you really want, you can actually go back and you can read each of those, those verse references to see where this principle played out in Jesus's life and ministry. Um, we also have a resource for that. So this is more work for Zach, but um, we'll put a, <laughs> there's a study <laughs> guide. A good one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a study guide that um, that we did put together that goes alongside the book. So if you want to read through that for yourself, if you want to take a young believer that um, that you're trying to impress upon the ministry of Jesus, the mission of Jesus, then this study guide can be something that really helps you with. I think it's great to go through with someone who has made it clear that they're serious about following Jesus and they're interested in learning how to help someone else follow Jesus. So they really need to have both those qualities to get the uh, the max benefit from this particular resource. But if you've got someone that you are discipling who is clearly serious about following Jesus and they want to learn how to start helping others, I think the Master Plan of Evangelism is a great resource to go through with them. So that'd be my uh, my third practical resource to share. All right. That's a good one. And it's worth repeating. So, I mean, let's just keep going at it. It's a great book and you should definitely read it. Um, I'm going to do a book too. This one was um, written in the last few years. I don't know. Look at my copy, friends. That's happening. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. So this is Letters to the Church by Francis Chan. Um, it's on the, a similar, I, f I feel like it's different, but it's similar. And that's why I'm talking about it next. Because this book, um, uh, Francis Chan is a very well-known art author, but he kind of um, has felt called to taking the church back to a more uh, biblical, like what it looked like in Acts. Right. Um, I don't know how to put it. New Testament. Anyway. Yeah, thank you. All right, you should just read this book and listen to Andrew, and you'll know all about it. Um, I, I really love this book. It's something that um, sometimes what you have definitely felt like the Lord is is teaching you things about um, your own walk as a Christian and, and your view of church and what it should look like and how we should be as followers of Jesus, what he's called us to. And that can be really hard to then explain to other people. So thank goodness for really good authors um, who have come along and put it really well. This is a super fast read. Um, it can be sobering if it's if you've been just entrenched in the modern church, um, then you may become a little uh, sobered by the, the state of things, but I think in a, a very good way. This was a very encouraging book and also uh, I think really was very convicting as well. I would say this book is for anyone who has maybe been a believer their whole lives or a really long time, and they have that feeling of there has to be more. I have to be doing more. I, I'm i missing something. <laughs> like right. I is, am doing like 20 things. In is this all church. there is? Right. Yeah. yeah. This book is really great for that. And um, hopefully we'll then bring people even more into, into the harvest because we are really doing a lot of the things he talks about in this book. So I'm going to run, rush on into my next one. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I'm also, I'm also out of bullets. So go ahead and share. Okay. <laughs> Why don't oh, we share friends. one more? I've got so many. No, Let's share fine. one more and we'll wrap it up since I okay. think we're. Oh, we're right at the 30 minute mark. I'm so sorry, yeah. but I have to, this is really important. You can't leave us hanging now. So I know. What, what is this? Okay, last I'll do one? it fast. So this last one is um, find a way to share the gospel that you um, find easy for you and you find works like people react well to it when you're sharing it and then really become very well versed in that one method. There's so many. Um, our family uses the three circles and this um, this end of this year, my young oh, oldest son, almost the youngest, my oldest son asked for us to make these stickers and I'll oh, pull it up. There wow. Very cool. So we made these stickers. Um, you can make stickers online very cheaply. Um, just download your PDF of whatever drawing you have. And if you use any of the, the methods that are probably pretty prominent, um, the two kingdoms, the three circles, the bridge, any of those illustrations, um, they are already, somebody's already made them. You just Google it. And we've made stickers and we stick them to things. So this is my cell phone and I have the three circles on the back of my phone. 
my son has stuck them to his folders and other things. Um, the, the great thing about this is if you are not someone who is just super evangelistic in nature and you don't just strike up conversations with strangers, then to have something on your phone that's kind of odd, people will ask you about it. People have asked me about it. And then you have an easy way to share the gospel. Um, for kids, this is great because they can just get stressed when having to have to remember all the things that they know and then draw it out. So this is just a way for him to then point at all the elements. They're all right there. It helps him to remember. And so I feel like it's really helped my kids, but it's also really helped all the adults in our church as well. So get yourself some stickers. <laughs> so I love it. We used um, a company called Monkey Chimp, but there's a lot online. I think we got like 60 of these for like 30 bucks or something. So no, it was less. Anyway, it's cheap. You should do it. Um, these you can stick anywhere, on any surface, on your car, on whatever, anything that people see. So I think finding ways that we can share the gospel, especially for those of us who are not um, at all tend towards being extroverts or people to share the gospel, this is a way to help us, to help either to remind ourselves to, that we should be sharing with the lost um, or just as a useful tool to start a conversation. So that's yeah. One of the, one of the things that I'm a big believer in is that everything is figure outable, um, <laughs> and and that's part of why we're doing into the harvest is that we do want to help you gain the clarity and the confidence that you need to share your faith. And so that's a that's a great one, Abigail, because I think it it does both of those things. It, it provides a lot of clarity. It's right there. It's a visual. And obviously it also helps us be confident because either someone initiates the conversation or we've sort of got a framework that we can follow as, uh, as we share with others. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we did it. Maybe we sort of fit it in. Um, I got a little carried away, but we did it. So thanks so much for checking today's show out and the busyness of your crazy Decembers. But most importantly, if you have a tool that has helped you this year, we really want to hear about it. So leave us a comment. You can do that on YouTube. You can do it on our Facebook page, which is where we post our episodes every single week. So we really want to hear your feedback. So please let us know some cool tools, resources, whatever else is helping you with discipleship in 2019. And we will see you in 2020. See you January 2nd. <laughs> Bye, guys.